Today I want to speak about the dad and mom churches. <laughs> Do you go to these churches where you say, oh, this is my dad, this is my mom, in terms of a spiritual father or a spiritual mother? Now, my friends, we need to be very much awake because these are the last days. And um, if today, when you look at the world, there's, there's so much deception, so many false prophets out there, and then this person that you call your spiritual dad or spiritual mom, if you check at his character, number one, you see, truly he's a con man. He's a thief. He keeps on stealing from people, lying to them about this, lying to them about that for self-gain. And then you have the guts to call him your father or your mother or this and that. And not knowing that the Bible says that everything that you speak here on earth it has power also in the spiritual world. So if, if, if I keep on calling you my father, then at the end of the day in the spiritual world, it has been accepted so. And if I uh, call God my father, then God becomes your father. Well, some people will say, oh, but you see, we're just reverencing these people. The Bible is very clear. And actually, Jesus was very clear when he says in the book of Matthew that do not call anyone here on earth father. For only one is your father and is in heaven. I don't think Jesus was mad. He said exactly and meant exactly what he says. Because he knew so many people will come and pretend that I'm your father, I'm your father, I'm your father, I'm your father. And some people will rush to the book of Corinthians and in the epistles of Paul and say, Oh, Paul called Timothy my son, my son in <laughs> Today I've begotten you in the gospel. So can, can we just evaluate what actually Paul was saying when he called uh, 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 Timothy, my son? He was literally mean, I've begotten you, I've brought you in Christ. Now you are a son of God. Uh, these people, I don't think that uh, any, any Corinthian became uh, a child of Paul. We are not children of Paul. We are children of God. Timothy was not a child of Paul. He was a child of God. And all these were ministers by whom God used them to lead others to the gospel. Even to date, the same remains. You're not a child of this guy or that guy or that person or that person. And even Paul himself, he refuted the same. In these divisions, let's check. In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, from verse 3, listen to this. Paul says, for you are yet carnal. You people, you are still carnal. For where is there is, for whereby there is among you envying. You are envying each other. Look at my papa. Look at your papa. Mm -hmm. There is envying among us you. And strife and divisions. Oh, this division. Oh, you are from which church? Me, I am from this one. And you, you are from this one. There is division among us the body of Christ. And you, are you not yet carnal? And walk as men. Listen to what Paul is saying. When you have all these decisions, divisions, don't you walk like men? For while one says, I am of Paul. And another one, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed. Even as the Lord gave mercy to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. So then there is... Neither he that planted anything, neither he that waters, but God that gives the increase. This is the Apostle Paul himself, he said that. He said, stop saying, oh, I'm of this guy and I'm of this person. This is my papa, this is my papa, this is my dad, this is my dad. All these are just ministers by whom you got salvation. And when you start calling them dad this, mom that, and you start aligning yourself with them too much, remember... Whatever you declare here on earth has also been declared in the spiritual world. Come to think of it, most of these pastors right now, especially in mega churches, most of them, they are doing witchcraft. Absolutely 100%. Just go and check. And it's been exposed everywhere. It's been exposed everywhere. Now, think about it. What are some of the reasons why these guys would want you to be their spiritual sons? They tell you, oh, I want you to be my spiritual son. And then you say, oh, yeah, Papa, I'll be your son. I'll be your son. 
Now, when they are going to the witch doctors to go and make sacrifices, remember, it's in the spiritual world. Life is spiritual, my friends. And they start giving their children for sacrifice, for fame and money and wealth. Will they not give you? Will they not offer you? That's why you see people in churches, they have totally lost it. And you keep on saying, oh, this pastor keeps on praying me all the time, praying for me all the time. But I don't receive this. I don't receive that. My family is in poverty. My family is doing this. Oh, I'm in constant problems. They stole your star, my friends, a long time. Did you hear even what Pastor Ezekiel was speaking the other day? He was saying that, oh, Benihin came and uh, you see uh, in the spiritual world, there are also masters out there. You don't just, you don't wait for things to come. You take them. And he says, I looked at him and I took. What did he take? Could it be that money that he was giving him? The 14, was it 4 million or 14 million? Could it be that he was still also robbing his stuff? You know, <laughs> I don't want to be very precise, but guys, look at life in a spiritual way. Ask yourself, as I keep on calling this guy spiritual father, spiritual mother, my dad, my mom, my what, have you even looked at his character? Ask yourself, this guy, his character, <laughs> is he a thief? Because if he is a thief, I'm also a thief. And furthermore, there is nothing to call these people fathers or mothers. Why? It's not because you detest them. It's not because you don't value them. No, it is very good that they brought you to Christ. But let it be up to that point. Because if you keep on now elevating someone to a level that is of God, oh, I can only hear from this man. He's the only guy by which I can hear God through. Then you're making him the mediator between you and God. And remember the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, there's only one mediator between man and God, the man Jesus. And anything which is put bef between you and God becomes an idol. Guys, let's stop idol worshipping. Let's stop worshipping idols and let's focus on God alone. Because that is what matters. And that is the reason why these people will never even want you to know the gospel. Because they want to keep you on fear. That you'll never know the truth and the truth will never set you free. You'll be there looking at a man. Oh, Papa, what has God said for me today? What has he said? What has he said? Has he given you a word for me? As if you'll never hear anything from God. It is because you never actually hear. Because you've never even known the gospel. How many pastors will tell you the truth about the gospel? And even how many even know the gospel? What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it speaks about how that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So how did Jesus die? We all know that Jesus died by shedding his blood on the cross. Because Hebrews 9.22 says, without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. Jesus had to shed his blood for you to receive salvation. And how do you receive that salvation? By shedding of his blood. What is important about the blood? Leviticus 17.11 tells us, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the soul. So when Jesus was pouring his blood on the cross, he was literally pouring out his life. Giving you his life so that you may receive it and live. How do you receive that life? By faith. And how do you receive faith? The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The moment you hear the word of God, you receive faith. And that faith, by the faith, you believe and get salvation. My friends, salvation is very simple. It is just by believing. But most of these guys will never tell you what the gospel is all about. They'll tell you the gospel is coming to our church, doing this, helping Papa, giving tithes, doing this, doing that, doing that. And they will confuse you. And at the end of the day, when Jesus comes, you'll be worried. And you'll wonder, Jesus, why are you leaving me? But I confessed you. And he'll, Jesus will tell you, away from me, you that worketh iniquity. I never knew you.